Ever wondered what an old farmer might do when he can no longer tend his fields? Imagine, if you will, an aged man weathered by years of hard work under the sun, his hands as rough as the soil he's tilled for decades. This is our old farmer living a simple life, far removed from the hustle and bustle of the city. His greatest joy and perhaps his greatest sorrow is his tiny patch of land. Potatoes, a humble vegetable, but to our old farmer, they represent his livelihood, his sustenance. Every year he's been planting and harvesting his own potatoes, a ritual as familiar to him as the changing of the seasons. But this year, things are different. The strength that once flowed so freely in his veins has diminished. He can't dig the field by himself. He can't plant his potatoes. In his quiet farmhouse, he sits down at a worn wooden table, an old piece of parchment before him. He dips his quill in the inkwell and begins to write a letter, each word heavy with the weight of his predicament. He's writing to his son, his only child who's far away, locked behind bars. The son, who in better times would have been by his side, helping him dig the field, plant the seeds, and share in the joy of the harvest. Dad can't even think of digging the field. He can't plant the potatoes this year, he writes, his penmanship shaky yet determined. He talks about the loneliness, the struggle, the uncertainty of the future. He tells his son about the empty field, waiting for the potatoes that may never come. The old farmer folds the letter, seals it with a sigh, and sends it off, carried by the wind and the hopes of a desperate man. He doesn't know if his words will bring any change, or if his son can even help from behind the cold prison walls. But he had to try. He had to do something. He sends the letter, hopeful but unsure of what might come next. What would you do if you were in a prison cell and received such a letter from your father? Imagine the son's dilemma, his heart heavy with the weight of his father's predicament. He couldn't leave the confines of his cell, yet he needed to find a way to help his father. So he picked up his pen and began to craft a response, a clever plan brewing in his mind. Dear Dad, he began, his words filled with an unspoken apology for the predicament he had put himself in. I urge you not to even think about digging the field this year. His words may have seemed odd, even concerning to his father, but he continued, that's where I buried all the stolen money. Now you might be wondering why would he confess such a thing in a letter? Why divulge the location of his hidden loot, especially in a place as public as a prison where letters could easily be read by prying eyes? But remember, this was a cunning plan, a scheme devised by a son desperate to help his father from within the confines of his cell. His words were carefully chosen, his confession deliberate. He knew the prison officials were likely to intercept the letter. He knew they would read his confession and driven by the lure of the hidden loot, they would dig up the field, searching for the stolen money. And in doing so, they would unknowingly prepare the field for his father's potato planting, fulfilling the task he was unable to do himself. As he finished his letter, he couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction. His plan was set into motion, his message penned with the hope that it would reach the right ears, that it would spur the necessary actions. He sealed the envelope, his heart heavy yet hopeful. Even from within the cold, confining walls of his cell, he had found a way to help his father. The son's letter, full of hidden intentions, is now on its way to his father. What happens when a letter intended for one falls into the hands of others? Imagine the scene, a quiet police station, the rustle of paper as an officer unfolds the son's letter, and the sudden hush that falls over the room as they read the words printed in black and white. Dad, don't even think of digging the field, that's where I buried all the money I stole. The implications of the letter are clear. The police officers exchange glances, a silent agreement passing between them. This could be their big break. This could be the evidence they need to close a case that has been hanging over their heads like a storm cloud. Decision made, they gather their tools and set off to the old farmer's field. As they arrive, the field lies before them, vast and untouched. It's a puzzle waiting to be solved, a secret waiting to be uncovered. With shovels in hand and determination etched on their faces, they begin to dig. One by one, holes appear in the once smooth surface of the field like scars on the earth. Hours turn into days as the police tirelessly search the field, their initial enthusiasm replaced by growing frustration. The field is turned upside down, inside out, every inch of it scrutinized. But to their disbelief, they find absolutely nothing. Not a single cent of the stolen money. The field, once filled with the promise of hidden treasures, now only holds disappointment for the worn-out officers. With heavy hearts and empty hands, they leave the field. 
The sun's words echo in their minds, a cruel joke at their expense. The field, once a symbol of hope, now stands as a testament to their fruitless search. With the field turned upside down and no money to be found, the police leave empty-handed. But little do they know, the story is far from over. The sun's cunning plan is just beginning to unfold. Can a son locked away in prison still find a way to help his father? What seemed like an impossible question was about to be answered in an unexpected way. Days passed after the police had turned over every inch of the old farmer's field. The dusty ground once untouched for the season was now a patchwork of freshly dug earth. The farmer, bewildered by the unexpected turn of events, could only watch as his field was transformed. Little did he know, a letter was on its way to him, carrying a twist that would change everything. The letter arrived bearing the familiar handwriting of his son. The old farmer, with his heart pounding, carefully unfolded the worn paper. He began to read, his eyes scanning the words that had traveled from a cell to his humble farmhouse. His son had written, Now plant your potatoes, Dad. It's the best I can do from here. The words hung in the air, a simple sentence that carried the weight of a clever plan. The son, despite being locked away, had found a way to help his father. His words were not a confession, but a plot, a ruse that used the greed of the police to his advantage. He knew they would dig up the field in search of the stolen money, and in doing so, they prepared the ground for the old farmer. A field that seemed too vast to be tilled by one man was now ready for planting. The son, in his own cunning way, had turned his misfortune into a blessing for his father. He had seen an opportunity where others saw only despair. From behind bars, he had managed to lend a hand, to till a field, to plant a season's worth of potatoes. With a smile of disbelief, the old farmer understood. His son, with his words and his wit, had done what he could not. The field was ready and it was time to plant. And just like that, the son found a way to help his father from behind bars. What can we take away from this cunning yet heartwarming tale? Our story unfolded with an old farmer burdened by the weight of his lonely toil and a son separated by circumstance, yet bound by an unfaltering bond of love and duty. The son, despite his confinement, became the unexpected hero of our tale. His quick wit and clever plot did more than just bring a smile to our faces. It reminded us of the lengths we often go to, to help those we love, even when the odds seem stacked against us. In his resourcefulness, the son devised a plan that was as brilliant as it was audacious. He used his predicament not as an excuse but as a stepping stone to aid his father. His letter, simple in words but profound in meaning, became the catalyst that set the wheel of events in motion. The son's action teaches us a lesson in resourcefulness. When faced with a challenge, he didn't surrender to despair. Instead, he thought outside the box, demonstrating that often, the solutions to our problems lie not in what we have, but in how we use what we have. Moreover, this tale is a gentle reminder of the love and commitment that should exist within a family. The son, despite his own predicament, did not forget his father. He could have chosen to turn a blind eye, but he didn't. He chose to help, to reach out, to make a difference. This shows that no matter where we are or what situation we find ourselves in, we can still impact the lives of those we care about. In conclusion, this story is a testament to the power of quick thinking, the value of resourcefulness, and the enduring bond of family love. It teaches us that even in the face of adversity, we can rise above our circumstances, find ingenious solutions, and continue to support our loved ones. In the most unexpected ways, we can find solutions to our problems and continue to support those we care about no matter where we are.